everybody and welcome to my channel blind hope crochet in today's tutorial i am going to be showing you how to make this cute little flower and to me the way it feels it kind of reminds me of a very small rose kind of like the mini roses so they're not really big they're not um tall petals and short petals in the middle uh it's there all the petals are evenly length and they just kind of come around in a swirl if you have no vision. Uh, and like I said, it just reminds me of a very small rose. And what's nice is that they don't bulk up like a bud. It will sit flat up against a project. So if you're making it to go on a hat or on a headband, even on a blanket, uh, th this will sit absolutely flush to your project. So it's not going to stick out really far. And what's nice about this is that it doesn't take very much yarn. So if you have a bunch of scrap yarn sitting around and you were trying to figure out something you could make, this makes a really cute project. So what you're going to need for this today is yarn of any color. Uh, I'm using some leftover Burnett Pop that I had left over. I'm using a 5 millimeter hook. You're going to need a pair of scissors and a yarn needle. So let's get started. All right, so to start out this project, you're going to want to start out with a slip knot. So take the tail of your yarn, wrap it around your index finger, and you're gonna wanna leave kind of a long tail to sew in at the end. Don't leave a short tail, because then it'll be sticking out on the back of your project at the end, and that's what you don't want. And you don't just wanna snip it, because then you'll leave your slip knot exposed, and there's a chance that it could come undone. So give yourself a bit of a long tail, maybe um, like three or four inches, just good enough to be able to really sew in at the end. So like I said, take your yarn, wrap it around your index finger, where the two pieces cross, grab it with the other hand and slip it off your finger. Switch hands and hold it where they cross, pick up your hook and insert it into the loop. Then you're going to not only hold your hook with the one hand, but at the point where they cross, go on ahead and hold that with your thumb and index finger of the same hand that you're holding the hook with. Take your tail, yarn over, and then kind of switch up the holding point with the other hand so you can use the hand holding the hook to grab the tail and pull a portion of it through to make that slip knot. And so when you tighten it up, you'll see you'll have a fairly long piece of yarn as a tail, and then you will have your working end, which is connected to the rest of your yarn. Now what you're gonna wanna do is chain 21. Now this will make a fairly small flower. Uh, let me just see if I can measure this here by feel. Let's see, here's a line. So from petal to petal, this flower is, let me see, one, about two inches wide all together. And that's from one petal end to the other petal end, depending upon how you layer it. And I will explain the layering once we get to the part when we sew it together. And you'll see kind of as we go along. So if you want it bigger than that, you're going to want to chain more chains. But right now we're just going to start out with a small one. And once you make the small one, then from there you can judge how much bigger you want to make it. So now, like I said, we are going to chain a total of 21. So yarn over, pull through for one, yarn over, pull through for two, yarn over, pull through for three, yarn over, pull through for four, yarn over, pull through for five, yarn over, pull through for six, yarn over, pull through for seven, yarn over, pull through for eight, yarn over, pull through for nine, yarn over, 10, yarn over, 11, yarn over, 12, yarn over, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 
and 21. So now, when you are crocheting, if you're a first timer, you might want to try doing this with a bigger hook because I know a lot of times people will crochet really tight and we're going to be working into these chains that we just made. So if it's tight and you don't think you're going to be able to get your hook in there, you might want to unravel it and start back over. But if not, and you're with me, go ahead and run your hand down the chain just to make sure that everything is straight. If your chain gets crooked, it's going to mess it up. Now, we are going to do three single crochets into the second chain from the hook. So the loop on your hook never counts as a chain. So then if you feel underneath it, that's the first one. And then the one underneath that is the second one. You're going to insert your hook, grab the yarn, and pull up that loop. You have two loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through both of those loops. That is a single crochet. Insert your hook back into that same stitch. Grab the yarn and pull up that loop. Two on your hook. Yarn over and pull through. That's your second single crochet. In the same stitch, you're going to insert your hook again. Grab the yarn and pull up the loop. Two on the hook. Yarn over and pull two pull through two. So that is three single crochets in that chain. Now go to the next chain and we're going to do the same thing again. Insert your hook, grab the yarn and pull up the loop. Two loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through two. Now insert the hook back into the same stitch, pull up the loop, two on your hook, yarn over and pull through those two into the same stitch again, insert the hook, grab the yarn and pull up a stitch or pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through both of those. Find your next chain, insert your hook, grab your yarn and pull up the loop, two loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through two, into the same stitch, grab the yarn, pull up the loop, two loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through those two. That's two. Insert your hook, grab the yarn and pull up the loop, yarn over and pull through two. Now as we're doing this, you'll feel that your yarn is starting to curl. That's what you want. So as you continue to go down this chain, your project is going to continue to curl like this. And that is exactly the effect that we are going for. So now I want you to continue doing three single crochet in each chain all the way down to the bottom. Make sure to keep your chain straight and I will get back to you at the end of the chain. Okay. Now. Okay, so I just finished doing three single crochets in my last chain. And as you can feel, you have this really tight, well, not, not extremely tight, but kind of tight curl that you've made with all your stitches. So now what we are going to do is if you will take your working yarn and your tail that is from your slip stitch or your slip knot and yarn it over your hook and pull them through the loop on your hook, we are going to get ready to fasten off. And the tail you're going to want to leave yourself to work with is going to be like a foot. So go on ahead and snip your yarn like so and take your hook and pull it all through that loop. So now tug it kind of tight so that way it closes everything off and then just to go on ahead and ready yourself find your yarn needle and you are going to take the long tail that you just cut off and you're going to go on ahead and thread your needle to have it ready to sew with. Now pick up your little curly cue 
and go back to the other end where we first started, where it first started to curl. And so now, as you work it, as you work your curls, you can kind of unwind them, but layer them one underneath the other. And as you continue to do that around in a spiral, but you're widening your spiral, what it will do is it will give you that feel of a flower. So just keep working it on each side. And then once you have it out, you can judge how it feels. If you can do that, if you're not really comfortable on doing that yet, or you haven't really acquired that skill, feel free to go ask somebody and say, does this look like a little flower to you? And they'll tell you yes or no, or it's too tight, or it's not tight enough. So feel free before you start sewing to get as many opinions as you feel comfortable. And let's see here. That feels good to me. So now what you're going to do is take your yarn on your needle and you're going to bring it from the bottom all the way up through one set or one whole layered section of all these petals that you've done. So go from the bottom all the way through the top and pull it through. Now you don't want your stitches to show at the top. So when you go to make your next sewing move, just move slightly over so the stitch that you leave is not really long, big, and noticeable. And then go all the way down through to the other side. And let's see here. There we go. Now, hmm. I'm going to come over here and go up. And just make sure you get all your layers and you'll be able to feel when you think you've went all the way around to say, okay, is this side tacked down? Is that side tacked down? And if it's not, you just keep working your way around in a circle because it's easier that way just to follow the way the spiral goes to tack everything together and bring it through. So let's see, it feels like I need to do maybe one Maybe two more stitches here. And always make sure when you finish that your last stitch is going from the top to the bottom. You don't want to leave your tail coming out of the top because when you sew it onto a project, you want the spiral to show. So don't make it that your last stitch comes out where you left your tail hanging out of the top of your rows. Come on. Okay, so now that was my last stitch and I have all of my petals together. Now I'm gonna flip it to the underside and if you've ever done sewing before, how you finish it off is you will take your needle and just run it through, not all the way through, but just underneath the back side of some of those pieces of yarn so that way you make a loop and now that you've made a loop go on ahead and take your needle and put it through the loop so that way once you pull it through it'll make like a little knot and that will secure your work from coming undone now you can take your needle off that piece and grab the long tail that you left from your slip knot and thread your needle come on like so and now to make sure that your slip knot does not come undone just gently grab the back fibers or go underneath some of these pieces and run that tail through 
a few times. And then once you've done that, then you can grab your scissors, clip off the excess, not the long tail, but clip off the excess to the tail that you had from the slip knot. So that way the long piece that you have left, you can use to sew it to a project. And there you go, one teeny tiny little flower that will be perfect for your next project. So I hope you enjoyed my tutorial. If you have any questions or comments, please put it in the comment box below. Give it a thumbs up if you like the video. Hit that subscribe button so you'll know when I come out with my next video. And be safe, be healthy, and be crafty. Have a great day.